prospect is currently undrafted or projected undrafted, but I believe that's going to change here. But one thing you see is he gets some steel and he gets some transition. Really elite defensive prospect. He also really fights for rebounds. And to me, when I watch games, I watch like four Wake Forest games. And the dude, he's like Ronjan Rondo in the sense that he's a good playmaker. Now, he'll get caught in traffic sometimes or force passes. But you just see this verticality and how flutters is more display. And when I think about it more and more, I don't want to be seen as someone hyping up guys irrationally. So I'm just going to use KBH. It feels like the athleticism of a Russell Westbrook, or maybe more accurately, a John Wall. Just a really explosive 6'5", 200 pounds, pure physical NBA body. Now the NCAA has this thing called the transfer portal. So this guy actually wasn't getting any playing time at all in Oklahoma and transferred over to Wake Forest, and this was the first year. Now, it's interesting. He has a good-looking shot, but his statistics don't really show that. Shot 28% from the three-point line, college fee, and 69% from the free throw line. Those are some areas there, and I feel like he could do better with patience. But when you just look at his athleticism and court vision, those are the things that are really enticing. And the shot form itself, to me, is not that bad. To where I, I could see him and look again at passing lane. And then that little bounce pass right there. He can make all of the passes. I swear, the first Wake Forest game that I watched, it was against Duke. In like the first five minutes, the kid was all over the place. And I was about to be like, okay, I give up. But something kept telling me. There's something raw, but very exciting about him. See that pass? There are very few NBA guards who can make a pass like that. And Alondis just put this on a dime. Like, that's some Jason Kidd stuff. Like, prime Jason Kidd on the New Jersey Nets type stuff. And you see here, he's just able to pull up, rise up. If I were to pinpoint anything with his shot mechanics, I feel like a little bit rigid, a little bit slow. Where if he were able to get a little more arc, a little more feet flowing into the jumper, that might help him out a bit. And just that kick out pass. And when you talk about shooters like Shake Milton, not really a shooter, but Danny Green, if he were ever healthy after the ACL tragedy. Basically, guys like those, Atlantis would really take advantage of at the next level, a bunch of spacers. And just look at the fearlessness of how he attacks the bucket. That's his number one trait right now. Even in the sparse minutes he was getting at Oklahoma, his lowest effective field goal percentage went in two, two point field goals was 56, 58, and this year with Wake Forest, 60% from two point range. So this is the guy who he attacks the basket and he's going to convert uh, finishing at the rim really, really high. If his jump shot ever gets together, this kid could be a monster. I'm talking, like I said, they had him undrafted. I think as he goes through the combine, as he goes through the process, a team's going to promise him because he's just too good to be undrafted. I hope he's undrafted. I mean, not for him. I, I want him to be drafted because I think he has that potential. Just see that athleticism, above average NBA athleticism in the Londres Williams. But I hope he's undrafted so that the Sixers can get him. Because this kid just has all of the tools. I literally shouted him out. I'm not I'm sure you pay attention to some random dude's Twitter, but I shouted him out and promised him that I was going to really get this. I didn't really promise him this, obviously. I do this for my own sake, but when I see a prospect who just plays this kind of game, and not even this kind of game, not like I'm going to go all guards and bat the six of the forwards, but... I was just going to just literally say that when you play the game with the spirit that he does, we all talk about this culture and stuff like that. What it really is about is spirit, the desire to play the game. And you just see this in Londres. He was fearless, even with the shot selection, which has to improve. That was part of the reason his field goal percentage wasn't as high as it could be. Just taking some difficult shots off the boundary he can't quite hit. But... Just the energy and the enthusiasm that Alondis plays with, that for me was inspiring. And I'm like, 
okay, I'm going to shout you out. I'm going to try and get you drafted. <laughs> because isn't it just a shame? The same thing with Tyrese Maxey falling to 21. Like, these scouts, they focus on so much of the negatives, and they don't focus enough on the positives. See, they a chase down block. That's everything that I've been seeing in the four or five games that I watch. Alontis Williams is not afraid to mix it up defensively. He's not afraid to be a all 6'5", 200 pounds. Just a really special prospect. And the reason that this prospect caught my eye is the other guy on Wake Forest, Jake Lavada, and I'm going to evaluate him very soon as well. He's another prospect, specifically for the Sixers that I like. Think Batiste Bible with an offensive game. You know, we're banking on, oh my God, let's have Matisse get a shot. I think you're going to draft a guy who has an offensive game and a good defensive game, and that's Lovato. So Wake Forest has two guys in Alondis Williams and Jake Lovato, who I think are NBA players at this level, not only for their offense, but for their defense. Like, you'll be surprised. Like, I'm seeing, and a lot of these guys are like junior players and senior players, so obviously they have NCAA game experience, but just the tenacity and the physicality that they play with on the defensive end, you know, that's something that you're not really seeing in a lot of NBA players anymore. You're not seeing that physical dog. And that's what Alondis Williams is. He's a physical dog, tremendous rebounder, great passer, will pass his shooters open. Just you have to work on your shot selection and you have to work on your feet post and you have to work on your patience, the pace of the game. So that you don't get yourself out of control. Now, I'm sure that one of the things that prospects might be concerned about that I'm not. Is that some people will look at him, obviously, as a junior because of the first two years of Oklahoma. But for me, that technically doesn't count because of the two years of Oklahoma, you barely play. And this is your first year starting in the ACC in Wake Forest. So for me... I view him at the same grade as a 19-year-old in terms of the one and done. I don't subscribe to it, but other scouts do, and that's probably why he's ranked P-Draft so low. I would tell these scouts, the guy doesn't have wear and tear on his body. He still has a lot to learn, and he has a very explosive athletic package where if you pass up on him, some other team's going to pick him up, and you're going to be thinking to yourself, why did we not get this kid? See, look at this mid-post game. Fade away shot at the buzzer. Like, you can't teach that level of confidence. And when that confidence goes into experience and years, and as he works and develops his jump shot, I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, what it was for Tyree Smacks. He's some insane one year jump. But give it two years or three years of good repetition. And I think this guy could potentially, potentially be a monster in the NBA because he has everything else. Attention to detail the playmaker, tremendous passing, physical 2, 6'5", 200. When the combine comes out, if this guy has a wingspan, and I think he does, like, like barely getting off the ground, like, <laughs> he, he has a wingspan. He definitely has a wingspan of 6'7". I think once that comes out, this P-draft thing is going to bounce up, and he's going to be slotted with a draft pick because he's too good not to be undrafted. I, I disagree with the undrafted great of him, P-Draft, I don't know what people are looking at, but I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at someone who could potentially start in the future, and I'm looking at someone who, if he came off our bench, our bench would be way better off, even have our backup point guard for the Sixers, but I, I wish this young man all the best, because we need exciting young dogs like this in our league, we really do. So, like, this is six of the universe. Hoping to get Alondis Williams on the squad. We need that. We need that fire. We need that energy. And we just need our playmate. Look at that. That little hot step into an and one layup. Are you kidding me? We don't have that on our team right now. Look at this again. Bully ball. True bully ball. And one. Mmm. Nice. Oh, just look at that pass. See, again, that little fed pass. Most guys don't make that path, but Alondis Williams can make that path.